Hello, it's me, Ghost Critic, um, and something a little bit different for this week's video output because it has been a very busy week for me, uh, and still is, despite the fact that I'm on holiday. Um, it was my birthday yesterday, so I've been away um, for the last few days, and I've just come back yesterday evening and um, having the day off today for myself and then um, doing lots of other things for the rest of the week so I didn't really think I'd have a chance to do a review video show tomorrow so and I did promise a vlog but everything got um, speeding along very quickly at the beginning of the week um, and I didn't have time to do a vlog so basically this is everything in this video so it could turn out to be quite long please stick with me um, there's lots of things to talk about lots of fun stuff to have a look at um, so stick around I'm gonna start off because this is mainly really for our UK viewers um, if you've got nothing to do this weekend um, unfortunately I can't make it because I am away but um, there is the Northampton International Comics Expo, nice, this weekend and the guest of honour there is going to be Alan Moore among um, many, many uh, comic book writers and creators. Um, I'm going to put a link to the website um, down below in the um, description box and you can find out the full details of who's um, at that. I mean, just going through here now, you've got Charlie Adler, Simon Bisley, Alan Davis, um, Melinda Gebby is going to be there, Shaky Kane and David Hine. There, there's lots and lots of people and there's going to be signings and panels and um, workshops. Um, it's all on the website. Uh, it's part of the library donation programme. So if you are going to... Uh, pick up a ticket and go if you want to hear Alan Moore in a rare opportunity to hear him speak about comic book writing you have to make a donation of like a trade paperback um, like an old graphic novel that you have I, I'm guessing it's got to be in quite good condition because these are going to be donated to libraries around the county um, but check out the um, website below for all the details Right, on to what normally starts a haul off and that, uh, sorry, a, a vlog video is a haul. And given that it's been my birthday, um, I've had lots of gifts uh, and presents. And I just thought I'd show you some of the more, the more geeky stuff because, you know, you get kind of paranoid on your birthday um, when people give you presents and um, they're like, aftershaves and deodorant gift box sets and booze so basically I'm a smelly drunk <laughs> but um, anyway it's all very nicely appreciated but you don't want to see them you want to see the geeky stuff um, this wasn't actually part of the present but I did pick these up from eBay um, I think it was a couple of weeks ago now but I managed to pick up another copy well not another but another um, Commandy issue 10 to continue my run of that. It also came with uh, an issue 25, which I already had, um, but it is in slightly better condition. The one I previously had, it's got a little bit of a tear where the um, British stamp sign was so. But as I normally say, I, I go for the bargain. So what I paid for this, um, or what I would have paid for this, um, I basically paid for both of them, so it's always nice to have an extra copy if it's in better condition. Um, I got a present from the Cap and Cummings. Thank you very much, Phil. It has made it here. Um, it came at the beginning, at the end of last week, if I remember rightly. Yeah, because I picked it up straight away. Um, he gave me um, a Topps Bombast or 
bomb yeah bombast it's a uh, kirby chrome super deluxe it's still in its bag inside here um, i'm gonna open it though i haven't had a chance to have a look, actually have a look inside but um uh, nice kirby art on the front of that and he also sent me this um graphic novel by jeff parker and steve lieber called underground Again, haven't had a quite a chance. I've looked through it. It looks very good. Um, some some nice, interesting artwork there. And Jeff Parker always writes a good tale, I find. So thank you very much for sending me that, Phil. Very, very kind of you. Um, I'm going to look forward to reading those. Um, what else did I get? <coughs> um, Marvel Firsts. Um, the 1970s edition given that I was born in the 70s um, and this are uh, people you know always ask us here on YouTube where's the best place to start what book should I pick up um, what should I be looking for and I always find if you're looking if you want to start like the old stuff if you want to start collecting the old stuff, these are great starting points to find out what you would actually like. Because in this volume, and they're not that expensive really, um, you get just like so many um, first issues. I mean, in here we've got um, Monster of Frankenstein issue one, Shun of the She-Devil number one, The Cat number one, um, Tomb of Dracula number one, Marvel Premiere number one, Hero of the Hire number one, Kelly and the Deadly Deadly Dozen number one, um, Outlaw Kid number one, uh, Amazing Adventures number one, uh, Marvel Spotlight issue one, two and five and they all show like your kind of first appearances or first issues of a series that was in 1970 so you get some some great artists in there and some um, great first appearances so they're always great to pick up and decide what you like so I'm looking forward to delving into that this is just a great book and my other half got me this um, love this oversized hard edition of creepy which collects kind of like the definitive collection of Richard Corbin's work on both creepy and eerie and it's over 300 pages of of his work and I've, I've only just read the introduction on this um, and kind of flipped through and looked at the artwork. You know, some of it's in, um, hopefully we can get a good look at that, but a lot of it's in black and white, but you also get his, his kind of colour work. So I was thoroughly impressed when I picked this, when I got opened this up. Um, they do another one of Bernie Wrightson. It's not as big as this one. It hasn't got as many pages, but it's another one that I'm looking looking for and uh, kind of saving up to get. So great book to delve into. Um, for the geeks, I guess uh, that was it for the books. Yes, um, but I also got this R two D two figure. Um, it's uh, the Star Wars original trilogy collection. Um, I'll be breaking that out of the box very soon. Ah, break it out of the box, no! Yes. Um, I got given the Xbox game of X-Men um, Destiny, um, which I've been plowing my way through um, this morning, having a lot of fun beating up all the baddies. And... Um, Anyone who's into kind of British sci-fi from kind of like the 1970s may know of this. Um, it was one of my favourite sci-fi TV shows uh, when I was growing up. Um, if you were into um, Doctor Who, the likelihood you were going to be into this as well. I got the first four, well, all of the seasons of Blake 7. Um, this it's very actually very difficult to find it and this is actually um, all in German the, the packaging um, and it has German subtitles which fortunately you can turn off so it's not distracting but yes the first and it's just like there's like four DVDs each um, I think in each box and 
there's like 650 minutes on each of them. Um, I've just started watching season one and I love it. It brings back so many memories. Um, I'm great. So that was all the kind of um, hall presence stuff wise. Um, I'm gonna do a review, review shows of the, uh, a review show of sorts. Uh, very short kind of um, <clears throat> kind of bullet points I guess to what I picked up I'm not going to go into too much detail on these um, but I picked up Justice League issue zero and obviously we've already had the origin uh, kind of from um, when Justice League first came out so this is centering on the backup story that we've been having with Billy Batson and of course him becoming Shazam. Um, I mean I wasn't keen on the backup story anyway I didn't like the character of Billy Batson I can understand and this is driven home a lot in this story the kind of circumstances he's had to go through people letting him down people disappointing him has kind of colored his view or on how people how he treats people um, but there is deep down still that element of a really good kid who's had to deal with um, a bad deal basically um, but even though he gets given this opportunity, you know, the, the power of Shazam, um, you see him using it in the worst ways possible. And yes, I guess it's him just getting the power for the first time. And you can see the whole, the responsibility of this power is going to be uh, probably a big major storyline coming up. Um, the artwork by um, Gary Frank and Ethan Van Skeever is very nice it has to be said but um, the backup story with Pandora um, trying to open Pandora's box was kind of interesting in the sense that you know the wizard from the Rock of Eternity from our previous story turns up in his dying breath to announce to Pandora that um, you know that judgment we made on you um, we actually were wrong the other two yes they deserved it um, who we now know were really the phantom menace and the question um, but yours was misjudged we were wrong we should have never done this to you and now you've got to go out and find um, someone of like a true evil or true dark if I remember it uh, the strongest of heart or the darkest who's going to be able to open Pandora's box um, uh, that was quite good and it did end the only character of the three that we haven't really had a great deal um, heard of is of course the question and um, we get a little snippet of them right on the last page it was okay um, as I said I've never been really interested in those backup stories that kind of gave us a bit more information um, about the kind of council of, of magicians of which they've all pretty much died bar this last one and then he does a kind of Obi-Wan Kenobi on us <laughs> um, so yeah uh, a nice little addition to, to the kind of Shazam storyline um, Batwoman issue zero was a really really nice issue this is Kate's story um, from her childhood until obviously to where she is now um, narrated by herself apparently we find out that every time she goes out on a mission um, um, and she's done this when she was like a soldier as well um, she leaves a message on her laptop for her father and the story is narrated as if she is leaving this message for her father to read in case she dies in the line of duty um, and like I said, it's, it's her becoming Batwoman and um, the kind of unforgiving tasks that her father puts her through her, her kind of soldier army life, um, are both the kind of the the bad, not necessarily the bad things, but, you know, the, the slightly um, unmoralistic, mm. sorry, um, kind of 
things she has to do but also the, the beneficial side of helping people as well and making sure towards the end of this story that she doesn't cross that ultimate line of killing somebody. Great artwork as always um, <coughs> by um, J.H. Williams and um, um, Blackman <coughs> and it's just it was a really enthralling storyline. I really enjoyed that. Um, Daredevil issue 18 and you know this mystery that um, Wade is is making here is just so interesting and I'm just like what the hell is going on we have Mila his um, his ex-wife who went insane in the last um, volume of Daredevil after kind of all um, Matt's kind of villains um, just terrorized this poor woman to uh, a state of mental incapability and is in the middle of a padded room now but for whatever reason whoever this person is um, she's there in Matt's bed when he returns home one evening um, what is going on who is messing with Matt's life it's such an engrossing tale Mark Wade is writing I am having a big problem with Foggy at the moment it's not like this isn't the first time that Foggy and Matt have come to um, kind of loggerheads and split up for a time. Um, they have always come together. But really, um, Foggy is just completely unforgiving here. And given that he has already mentioned and is was worried about the state of Matt's um, kind of mental health, to completely kind of take him out of his life you know completely it just seems well you're meant to be his best friend help him out here you know come on this is daredevil nothing is always as it seems um surely you know after everything the fog has been through is this really the straw that's kind of broke the camel's back that this is the point where you've gone no that's enough I can't wait to find out how this um, all pans out. It's it's just been really good story. Another well written storyline from Vertigo this time, and it's Mike Carey and Peter Gross. It's the unwritten issue forty one, and um, <clears throat> this is kind of uh, what happened after the um, Tommy Taylor kind of tour. Uh, and the the events that happened in Australia and Richie has taken um, Tommy into hiding in the last place he thinks anyone will look and that's Villa Diodata which um, was the place where all the murders of the kind of magic horror writers were killed um, way back in um, I think it was the second story arc before Tommy was sent to prison um, and it's a nice kind of one shot kind of story about the relationship between Richie and Tommy and you know given this story is called Puppet Masters it's very interesting that this kind of twist on this story is who is actually um, pulling everyone's strings who is kind of moving those chess pieces to where um, they need to be and the the kind of is Tommy even understanding what he could potentially be actually doing to everyone around him? Such a good story. I know I've converted quite a few of you onto the unwritten. Um, I want to convert even more because it's such a well-written story. Um, just go out and pick it up. I love the unwritten. Another Vertigo title that I always, always shout and scream about. It is, of course, Fables, and this is issue 121, and this is kind of a conclusion to our um, Cubs in Toyland, and we find out um, the outcome of Darien's sacrifice. Um, we now have the cauldron full of yummy goodness, 
and it is really a story because we heard in the last issue there was a kind of hint of a resurrection. I think the resurrection here um, is definitely that of Discardia um, blooming back into what it should have been, which was Toyland. Um, I always say this, but it's always true. It's such a magical story, um, storytelling by um, Buckingham. Uh, sorry, Willingham and Buckingham on art. Um, it just draws you in and makes you feel for each and every one of the characters and um, what they actually do uh, and, and, you know, are put through. Um, I love this book. Um, everyone should be reading Fables. There are a lot of trades to get through, but I don't care. Go and pick it up. Go and pick them all up. All of them. Get on board here. And uh, that was it for all my colleagues. I did pick up this kind of one shot of Thanos, the final threat. Um, I know they did, um, oh, what was it? It was just the Thanos quest, but it, that one was a little bit priced for me. I might buy it tomorrow, I don't know. Depends. But um, um, this basically reprints um, Avengers Annual Issue 7 and the Marvel two in one annual issue two and this was what this is four dollars ninety nine so a lot cheaper than the seven dollars ninety nine of the last one um, but I'm looking forward to um, a bit of Jim Starlin goodness uh, written and drawn. On to a bit of news uh, Marvel now is still chugging along they're throwing more words out at us or have been I'm a bit behind um, the latest two that I read was the the superior tagline um, and a lot of people have thought that was going to be a return of kind of Marvel Man Miracle Man but the weird thing now is that people are saying it's Spider-Man related um, this isn't definite this is just kind of more rumors but Dan Slot has been dropping a few hints and obviously it's issue 700 coming up very soon and by the way um, save your pennies because I believe it's going to be an expensive issue to buy. Uh, also there's Wanted um, which is uh, a new Cable and X-Force team up book with um, obviously Cable, Domino, Colossus, Forge and Dr Nemesis um, as the team. Um, with the X-Force tag on there, I'm wondering what's going to happen to Uncanny X-Force. Is that being left alone? I've been trying to find stuff out about that. Um, there's still solicits for it in November. I haven't seen any solicits for December yet. Um, but is Uncanny X-Force ending? Is this what's going to replace it? I don't know. Um, other news, I'm really looking forward to um, the Death of the Family storyline coming up from Scott Snyder in Batman. There was an interview on CBR with um, Greg Capullo, um, dropping lots of hints, telling us what we may or may not get uh, be expecting, um, which was um, a really interesting read. Um, anything, obviously, I talk about in here, I'll put some links in the description box below. So you, will, I'll put a link to that interview so you can read it. Um, two. Um, almost finally, um, obviously I've been quite busy so I've not got to see a lot of videos lately. I'm still kind of catching up but uh, Manusha Minute, Biro, Mr Sean is still continuing with his modern history of Batman which is just great. I do need to catch up on that but um, just his knowledge of the storylines that go through that and you know the additional information he adds it's just really interesting videos to watch and they're only like 10 minutes long um, I think you know that's that's been the, the longest one so far um, so that's always a great watch um, new um, to YouTube it's about six videos now I think but we have uh, another Aussie contributor from 20 Ingram Street I'll put a link to his channel below please go check out his videos and finally Safari Sunset 83 um, she's been going for a while but she just lately did um, or is starting um, this flatting tutorial I have no idea what it is it looks interesting um, but I think it will benefit a lot of you um, artist creators out there um, she's using lots of 
computer programs I know nothing about, but it's fascinating to watch. So uh, click on that link down in the description box. Um, let's wrap this vlog up before you all fall asleep. Um, I am going to be doing a lot of videos soon, and at least I'm going to record them to be um, uh, posted up on YouTube um, over the next week or so. I do have a lot of the Ultimate Graphic Novel Collection reviews to catch up on. Um, you've got Avengers Disassembled, um, you've got the new X-Men Ease for Extinction storyline, um, Secret War still to do, um, the second part of Avengers Forever, which I'm still reading, and the new one that came out today, um, Daredevil Born Again. So I've got quite a lot of those to catch up on. And of course I'm desperate to finish off um, the long box history videos, which I started so long ago. Um, but um, there's a quite a lot of the letter U's to get through and it's becoming quite a daunting task, I will admit. So that's it from me. I um, hope you're still here to see the end of it. If you're new to this, um, channel. Uh, this isn't normally what I do. Um, Thursdays is usually a review show but as I said at the top of the video I've been very busy this week but everything will be back to normal next week. I should think. Anyway thank you very much for watching. Subscribe if it's your first time here. I'll get that finger right eventually. Give it a big thumbs up and just throw a ton of comments below. Tell me what you um, what you've been up to. <laughs> Bye now.